Hi guys, Mr. Paluso here. This video is going to focus on Punnett squares and a few Punnett square problems so you'll be confident with completing them in class. So we're going to look at Punnett squares and it's a way that we can solve genetics problems. We're going to use them to calculate phenotypic and genotypic characteristics and features in offspring. Okay. So this is in your notes document, so if you could please fill this in. Punnett squares are a way of showing all the possible types of offspring that could result from a cross. So the breeding of um, any living organism. Now you cannot assume that the offspring will appear exactly in this order or in the exact ratio that we prescribe. It represents a probability. Now this is important. We're basically saying there's a percentage chance that the offspring will have this characteristic. We're not saying out of 100, exactly 75 will have it. We're saying there's a 75% chance. Okay. Here's what a Punnett square looks like, a completed one. So up the top, we have the characteristic we're talking about. So it looks like the coloured flowers, which is what we've been using for the majority of these videos. Um, so there's two alleles, red and white. Red is represented by big R and um, white is represented by little r. Now what you have is kind of a box and you can just draw it up like a grid, kind of like this. Okay. Um, if you draw it up yourself, it'll probably be a bit sloppier than this. Um, what you do is you have the gametes, so the sex cells, from one parent up the top. Okay, So both parents are homozygous for this example. We've got one parent that's homozygous recessive, so you put both of their alleles up the top, and the other parent is homozygous dominant, so they're down the bottom there. Now, when they pass on these alleles, there's basically four combinations that you can get. So there's four possible outcomes after fertilization. So the big R and the little r match up to get big R, little r here. And the same thing happens every time. So you're cross-referencing. So this big R, this little r will match up here. Um, this little r, this big R will match up here. This little r, this big R will match up here. So you can see that there's only one possible outcome, big R, little r. So there's a 100% chance of that genotype, heterozygous, occurring. And the phenotype will be red. So that's why all of the flowers um, that are bred from these parents will be red. When you complete a Punnett square, you have to do these things. So first of all, you need to write down and determine the parents' phenotype and genotype. It, it's essential to have that information before you start, and you usually just get given that information. You construct the four-square Punnett, so you draw it up. Um, it may be drawn for you. Write down one parent's genotype above, and one parent's genotype to the left. Now it doesn't matter which side is which, mum or dad doesn't have a specific position, it's just it doesn't matter which one. You then cross-reference and fill in the punnet and you're going to have two alleles in, in the box because um, a body cell is going to have uh, two copies of the alleles, okay, as opposed to the sex cells which only have one. You determine the offspring genotypic percentages. Each box is worth 25% and you can get the phenotypic percentages too. So here's another example. Um, this time we're using the letter Q. We don't know what it represents. So here we've got one parent, big Q, big Q, in separate boxes. This parent is heterozygous, big Q, little Q, and you're going to put the offspring in here. So you're going to have genotype of big Q, big Q in this box. Big Q, big Q in this box, big Q, little Q here, and big Q, little Q here. Okay. Um, so there's a, um, in this box, um, it equates to a 25% chance that they'll have this genotype. So we're going to go back to Mendel's discoveries and use his um, uh, data to, to practice our Punnett squares. So Mendel's um, experiments involved um, the colours of pea plants and we had the parent generation here and the F1 generation here. So basically pure bread, so homozygous for white and red were cross-pollinated and we had 100% uh, red being produced. So we'll see how that works with a Punnett square. 
So first of all, the parental genotypes were homozygous because they were purebred. Okay, purebred means homozygous. You have the same copy of each allele. So big R, big R for the red one and little R, little R for the white one. The gametes are split up. So basically it's saying this homozygous big R, big R can pass on either big R or big R. So that's the only thing it can pass down to the next generation. The little r, little r flower can only pass down little r gametes to the next generation. So there's only those possibilities. So you draw up your Punnett square and you put in the parental gametes down the side and up the top. Okay, so you split up those gametes here, 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 and here. Then you cross reference in order to get the offspring. So you're going to get 100% big r, little r. So the phenotypes of the offspring are going to be 100% red. Okay, so the, pr the parental genotypes are going to be 100% big R, big R, and the phenotypes are going to be 100% red flowers. Okay, so what I would want you guys to do now is to draw up this grid in your book, all right, and we're going to work through a problem together. So now we're going to do the Punnett square for the parent cross that results in the F1 generation. So we're going to cross two F1 generation flowers and see what the percentages are of the colours. So pause the video and draw a grid similar to this in your book. Okay, so these were actually the um, final answers for the previous cross. So this is how you would construct the cross if you were doing it in your books. You do the parent genotypes and then you have the offspring down here. And here we've got kind of a summary. 100% heterozygous dominant, big R, little r, 100% red flowers. This is the one that I want you guys to get down. So same thing, same grid, and we'll work on the next generation cross. So now we're going to do a cross with the heterozygous plants. So the F1 generation has a genotype of big R, little r, okay? And the colours of those flowers, so the phenotype is red. So we're going to do a cross now between two F1 generations to produce F2 offspring. So heterozygous for the genotype, so the gametes are these. With your Punnett square, we're going to have one parent on the side and the other parent up the top. So do the cross yourself and see what you get. Hopefully that's enough time. You guys use the pause button down here, right? Um, so this is what you get from your cross. Big R, big R, big R, little R, big R, little R, little R, little R. What are the phenotypes of the F2 offspring? So what colours are the flowers going to be? So we've got our four genotypes here. The phenotype, homozygous dominant, is going to be red because you've got two copies of the red allele. Heterozygous is going to be a red phenotype as well because you have the um, red allele dominant over the white recessive allele. And what about little r, little r? Okay, that's going to be, did we say white or yellow? I'm going to go with white because I think that's what we had in our example. Pretend that's white. Um, we would have our white flower. So three of the four possible offspring are red, only one shows the recessive phenotype. So you've got a three to one ratio, dominant to recessive. Or you can say 75% dominant, 25% recessive. So let's see what you got. So hopefully you've got something that looks like this and you've got your cross in your Punnett square with the alleles in the correct order. The information, this is what we want here. So check this out. 25%, so one box, is homozygous dominant, big R, big R, therefore red phenotype. 50%, so these two boxes combined, 25 plus 25, is heterozygous. Big R, little r, therefore red phenotype. 
and 25% homozygous recessive, little r, little r, therefore white. So you've got a phenotype percentage, 75% red total, adding up these two, and 25% white. Guys, thank you for practicing that Punnett square problem, 3 to 1 ratio, dominant to recessive. Good luck with your Punnett square problems. I'll see you in class to give you some help.